Hello and welcome to sim.pc and let's just get the elephant out of the room. I know it's this one right? No, but this dressing. I'm going out for dinner tonight so that is why I'm not just, you know, normal casual. I'm more about business casual today, mate. A bit more business casual. That is why I'm having this dressing and it's gonna be all good. It's gonna be all fine. I'm gonna celebrate with me mates that I'm turning 22. I know that I mentioned that in like every video now, but I'm having a bit of a Friday to Monday celebration. So it's gonna be all amazing, mate. It's gonna be like the best thing ever. No, it's going to be it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right but that's not what you hear why you're here sorry because today we're going to go through chapter three and as I understood it yesterday it was supposed to be about branding or adding bridging between branding and logo or logo to branding and I was like oh cool that's gonna be amazing because that's something I haven't read before and then it turned out to be like a lot about the logo and a little about the brand but I kind of understand what you're meaning with the branding and the bridging between the both of them so yeah we're gonna go through it and we have lots of content to go through today as well so sorry if I'm feeling like I'm just skipping over everything but that's just because we have some goddamn many things I know these chapters they're small and concise but they have all of the good information mates and so good examples I really like them so far but anyway not gonna sell it for them and yet again just gonna say that you can't actually give out any paid content unless you have a thousand subscribers so that you I don't have this isn't paid this isn't sponsored in any way uh, I feel like I need to say that in every video <laughs> anyway let's begin so this was all about creating the perfect logo apparently you know chapter 3 and all of that so in order to get into it universally across all logos is simplicity, simplicity according to Taylor Brand's observation. That means that basically all companies, right, when it comes to different logos, when it comes to successful brands' logos, when it comes to successful companies' logos, one thing that they all have in common, common is simplicity. They basically say that, well, many companies tend to have, that are successful, tend to have a very simplistic logo. They don't have all of these flashy things walking around all the place. They don't have a thousand words in the logo. Why? Well, because the logo should be able to fit both on a billboard, both on the top of a building, mate, and it's supposed to be fit inside an app in your phone. And if you have a thousand words on an app, you know, on the cover of an app, you're going to sit there and be like, I don't understand. Can I, can I have some glasses or like a microscope or something because I, I think it says and uh, that's not what you want you want something that is simplistic something people can relate to something that is easy to observe something that is easy to connect to and this should be connected to your branding as well in your core values but we're going to get into that so the third first thing is simplicity because simplicity brings the possibility of being easily accessible everywhere. As I said, from billboards to apps, you can put, as I said, a thousand words in a logo and everybody will be like, I don't understand. And then you can put one word in a logo that just says like, sell or buy. Ikea. I know I'm using Ikea a lot, but mates, I am a Swede, so that might be why, you know, industrialized context and all that. It can also be H&M, something that is simple, something that is easy to see, something that people can be like, I understand that. So simplicity is key. The next step is making it seem timeless. And an example of that, that could be car branding. You might use a wheel, let's say, instead of a special made car window that fits only one car. And what do I mean with this? Well, basically you want it to feel timeless. If you take Husqvarna, for instance, for instance, and let's try that with a bit more of an English pronunciation. And if any Swede is gonna watch this, it's gonna be like, ha ha, that sounds retarded, mate. Husqvarna, Husqvarna, I think, Husqvarna. Anyway, that company has been along since I think 1682. So that's in the, let's say if we translate this into English, the 17th century, something like that. Yes, the 17th century. And they created a logo now that is timeless, something that you can relate to the company of all time because a company could live for that long. It could be 325 years of innovation plus now actually. It could survive that long. So in order for your business to be prepared to go that long because you enter a business with the mindset right, that you're going to make it in the long run, in the long term. So in order to have this, you can't just have something that is really catchy in the moment. You can't have your fidget spinners, you can't have a dab, you can't have that. You can. You need to have something that seems timeless so that you can make small modification on it over the years. Because you can't you can make your logo fit to certain trends, that's not what I'm saying. But maybe you want something that is a core in your, in your logo that can keep on, that people are going to be like, that's the same no matter what year it is. A good example of this is horses. 
in car in car, in the car industry. Why? Well, because we measure you know the the power of the engines in horsepower. So if you use a horsepower, because that's how we measure power in cars, something that probably be there for a long time, and people can relate it back to what it means. It means horsepower. It means how we measure the engines. It means probably car. Am I right? Because that's basically all the time when I'm talking about horsepowers, it's in cars. When you have motorcycles, you talk about something else. I don't know what it is like hectic power or something anyway that doesn't matter maybe this horsepower is there as well so there we have the second part it should be timeless as well it's not only being simple it needs to be timeless as well the third one is a color and that is what people have the easiest time recognizing apparently according to Taylor brands and we're gonna put an infographic up here from the chapter about the color blue and you're just gonna read it off here mate so that you actually get an understanding of what I'm talking about of course you have it in front of you but I'm just going to open it here so what we're having is the infographic is in circles and it is a circle diagram it's an infographic i get it and then they have established three main parts outside so if you only have uh, if you relate these three things to each other you have secure collected worldly you have mindful calm and trustful and then you have classic stable and confident between secure collected worldly and classic stable confident you have custom between secure and mindful you have aware and between mindful and classic you have gracious and what does all of these have in common well the color blue because that is what different things that people might relate to color blue too so it's not as easy as just picking a color you need to pick the right color that fits the company and color and understanding of this the psychology behind it can help to convey your core values and brand branding behind it so let's take the example of a blue then yet again and make it eat and make it easy for us if you are in a company that are that are supporting a mindful and calm and trustful organization then maybe blue is the best color for you if you take yellow it might be something that makes people stress it might be think it's something that makes them happy you don't want that even if that can be good at sometimes you don't want that for your brand you want people to feel calm and then blue might be the best alternative option maybe you want it in the background to give an underlay and an understanding and underlying assumptions that to say of calm a calm effect when you read it maybe you want to have it in the phone so that people are actually focusing on it when they read it different things you need to understand the psychology behind what the color actually means in order to actually understand it in a good way and to actually utilize it in a good way an important thing to keep in mind is that sometimes the brand will be in black and white so you need to make the brand and the logo so to say convey the same message in the same understanding even if it is in black and white that's why many artists are using black and white sketches and then adding color to them later in order you know adding the colors that fits the company's branding and core values and core identity after the fact that they've already designed that a strong logo that works in black and white why is this important well because sometimes when you print you will print it in black and white sometimes when your uh, employees will print it they will print it in black and white and sometimes when people who distribute marketing for you will print it in black and white because it's cheaper because that's the only alternative they have maybe in a developing country they only have a black and white printer so you need to be able to make the logo stand out even in black and white it is important to have it being useful even in black and white because of the repercussions that it can have on your business when you're not in control over having it in color or black and white. So that's why, as I said, many artists are working from a black and white standpoint and then adding in colors later. That's the third one in color. Fourth is font. Don't make it overwhelming. Make it natural and connected to the rest of the logo. And what do I mean with overwhelming? Because people are going to be like, well, it's a font. It's supposed to be overwhelming, isn't it? It's supposed to be there in your face. Like H&M. When I watch the H&M logo, it's the H&M. It's nothing else. Am I right? But when I'm actually watching the H&M logo, it works with the background. They're having a red H&M on a white background. If they had a black background or a pink background or a red back black background, even worse then maybe the H&M wouldn't pop out as it does but now it pop out in a natural way as it wouldn't if it had a different font a different background so you want the font to feel natural you want the font to be there and be a part of the logo you don't want the font to overpower the logo if that isn't parts of your core values overpowering and showing something that being different than other things that, then it could be a choice for you to use it but you need to understand the psychology behind making a font pop so to say if you're going to use it in that way but I would say it needs to even if it pops it needs to feel natural that it pops as I said being natural that in the sense that your core values are actually actually that is supposed to pop and hence it feels natural when it pops 
But for most businesses who just want to have a nice logo, a simplistic logo, right? You need to have the font be a part of the logo and that can be really hard especially if you're just putting on the font because you're like oh that's a good word let's associate that with the business so that's the name of the business let's just put it there on the logo that we've already designed that are 10 out of 10 and then when you put the logo on it might be a 3 out of 10 it could have that drastic of an effect so you need to keep in mind the font you're going to use when you make the logo you need to keep in mind the word you're going to use maybe you wanted to collaborate with the colors that you've chosen in the logo maybe you wanted to be infused in the pictures that are you using or in the graphic design that you have implemented maybe you want the text to not be there seen but maybe something that you can just get a feel for when you watch it or do you want it to be a font but then you just make it a natural font that was a bit lot that was a lot about fonts I know simpler often means harder what do I mean with this well it needs to convey the same image the same ideas the same meaning but with less yeah with less that's it because many people will say, oh, I'm just going to make a logo, how hard can it be? It's supposed to be simple, how hard can it make to make something simple? Well, you can ask anybody who's going to graphic design or anybody who's into that kind of stuff or actually making logos professionally or psychologists for that matter. When you're making a simple design that covers a lot, that's hard. If you make a simple design to just cover one thing, that's hard enough. Because you can make, like for instance, a guy crossing the street or a girl crossing the street for that matter that can represent walking right but can also represent the danger of just walking out did you have a sidewalk there did you have a sidestep did you have these white lines in the ground for people to actually walk over are you actually right now representing danger in your logo or did you just represent taking the step to the next side walking forward is there a better way of conveying on conveying this side is there something that you think is obvious in the logo like oh it's a man that walks over or it's a girl that walks over but are you now facing Favoring one of the genders over the other. These are things that people can read into your logo that isn't quite good. You don't want them to read it in. You want it to have simplistic. You want to have a simplistic logo that people when pe that when people read into it, they read into the things that you want them to read into. You want to have some pre-established themes in the logo that when people are analyzing it and seeing it for the first time, they understand what you wanted them to understand. They you they conveyed the message that you wanted to convey to them. So it's really hard to make something simplistic and cover lots of fields and make it what you wanted it to be even when people are analyzing it and looking into it. Because yeah, you need to deliver more with less. So simplicity in logos, really hard but really important. So to end this, the summary that they had in the chapter reads as follows. Crafting the perfect logo relies on several important aspects. It has to be simple. It has to be representative of your brand and the colors used need to be significant as does the font. So there you have it mates, a bit of a summary in the end here. I know that might have seen like it was going at 110 miles an hour, just threw it all. Maybe you felt like, oh, there was, this was a bit rambly because this is like connecting to some things that we've covered before. And maybe you're just saying, I just watched that nice tie of his because, oh my days, did he tie that himself without the tutorial? Yes, I did. Thanks for asking. Thanks for noticing. But that was everything for me today, mates. Going to come back with a bit of a chapter review of chapter 4 tomorrow. And since they said in the last chapter that, oh, this is going to be all about them, logos and branding and bridging the gap between them and I thought it kind of was sure but it wasn't the main focus of it this was more like the first chapter in the uh, series so to say I'm not going to spoil what comes next we're just going to get into it mate so have a nice one mates and I'll see you tomorrow <laughs>